Right, hello everybody. Okay, last one for the series today. So I'm going to have done paper one, two, and three, Jan 2021, uh, for the IAL chemistry. Okay, guys, so I'm just going to crack on today. I've got no one in the chat yet. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's crack on. Let's flip to my clip, clip camera in case I need to do any dancing. Oh, 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 there we go. Get rid of that. Get rid of that stupid thing. <clears throat> okay. All right. Hi. Let's crack on, guys. Get rid of my keyboard. Okay, okay. Right. Okay, so practical paper. That's what this one is. Once again, I'll go through it and then run through the mark scheme and have a look. Uh, I made a couple of mistakes. Unit one, a uh, couple of mistakes. Unit two, unit two, my biggest mistake. Potassium is 39.1. Come on, Mr. Duncan, you can do a bit better than that. Do not ever try to do relative atomic masses in your head. Do not think that you know them. It's just not worth it. I accumulated a whole bunch of errors based on that. It's very frustrating. Use the periodic table. I just didn't want to flip between the table and the paper. It's annoying. Anyway, let's crack on. Okay, so paper three. Um, okay, so a student was provided with five test tubes labeled A, B, C, D, and E, each containing a colorless, colorless aqueous solution. So no transition metals here whatsoever. It's quite nice to know. The students tested each solution with universal indicator paper. Uh, only solution A turned it red. So that tells us it's going to be an acid. So solution A is nitric acid. Nitric acid. Nice and easy. Dead easy start, that, guys. I mean, heck, that's technically key stage three. Look for the acid, spot the acid. Next, a, a student mixed one centimeter cubed of solution A separately with one centimeter cubed of each of the other solutions. There was no change for three of the mixtures, but effervescence was observed when solution A was added to C. So we know that nitric acid is A, so therefore C must be a carbonate of some variety, so sodium carbonate. So just a quick mention, it does say identify. You would be allowed to do either formulae or the name, but just be aware that if you decide to flip over to the formula, please make sure you're giving the correct one. If you put the incorrect formula, they'll sting you. The word identify within Excel means you can give name or formula. If it says name, you must give the name. If it says give the formula, you're giving the formula. So just be aware of it. Give the ionic equation for the reaction with A and C. Okay, so nitric acid provides us with H+. Plus. That's what makes an acid an acid. Um, the carbonate, sodium carbonate, is providing us with carbonate ions. So CO3 2 minus. And we are forming CO2 and water. It's French for water, balance for charge, and we end up with that as our ionic equation. Include state symbols, aqueous, aqueous, gas, and liquid. Really easy to miss that state symbols bit. Just RTFQ, read the full question. Yeah, I definitely feel like I missed a whole load of bits with not doing that last time, but anyway. <clears throat> Next a student then mixes one centimeter cubed samples of the remaining solutions. So our remaining solutions are barium chloride, potassium bromide, and silver nitrate. So barium chloride, potassium bromide, and silver nitrate. So those are our three. Let's just check that they're... Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so it kind of makes sense now because... If you, so what you notice is you've got the cream and white precipitate on this one, and the only similarity is E. What that means is A must be the silver nitrate. So E is, and it says identify, so you can give name or formula. So I'll put the formula this time just to save myself some, uh, some hassle. Silver nitrate aqueous. And then B is the cream precipitate, which is the bromide ion. So we therefore must recognize that B is KBr, aqueous, and that D therefore must be the white precipitate containing the chloride. Aqueous, there we go. Nice easy start to the paper if I'm honest. 
Like so many additional questions usually come on the back of this. How could you prove that it's white and cream? To prove that it's white, you use dilute ammonia and it will vanish. To prove that it's cream, you use dilute ammonia and it won't vanish. Uh, you could also distinguish between the cream and the yellow being conch ammonia and the cream vanishes. Um, but loads of different things. Three of the cations and the compounds can be identified with flame tests. So we had barium, so Ba2+, plus is going to give a pale green. Uh, sometimes called apple green, if I'm honest. Um, but I'll stick with pale green. <clears throat> Next, we had potassium 1 plus, which is lilac. Gotta be careful, sorry. You're not allowed to call it purple. You're not allowed to call it anything else except for lilac. And the other one was sodium carbonate. So sodium carbonate's gonna give a yellow. Now at this point, people are going, well, hang on a sec. So why are you adding in the pale green to the barium? The reason being is copper two plus is also a green, but barium two plus is a very, very pale green. So nice to have that distinction. Next, sodium hydroxide solution reacts with carbon dioxide in the air and should be standardized before use. Ethane diuric acid can be used or may be used for this standardization. A standard solution of ethane diuric acid is prepared. 2.4 grams of ether of solid ethane diuric acid is dissolved in approximately 100 centimeters cubed of water in the deionized water in a beaker. The solution is transferred to the 250 volumetric flask and made up to the mark. Give a possible reason why any solution remaining in the beaker is washed into the volumetric flask before making it up to the mark. So just to quickly draw this out, if you've made up the solution, in here, this was approximately approximately 100 centimeters cubed, and they added in the ethane diuric acid crystals. They wait for it to dissolve. They stir until it's completely dissolved. So this now we stir. <laughs> we stir that until it becomes complete, and then we transfer it to a volumetric flask. And then what we do is we include all washings. The reason being is, if you pour it into, if you pour in your liquid, what we realize happens is at the end of it, we always end up with residue left behind in the beaker. So we want to wash this out. We add deionized water and then transfer to the volumetric flask. So this is to ensure, ensure all ethane diuric acid solution with the E, dioic acid solution solution is transferred it's gonna be interesting what they say that transferred to volumetric volumetric so none so none left none left in beaker Just adding in that little extra detail make it a little waffly <clears throat> calculate the concentration of the standard solution of ethane diuric acid in moles per dm cubed okay so First thing is we did 2.4 grams of ethane dioic acid. <clears throat> it's given us the MR. That's nice of them. So number of moles is grams over rams. So I've got 2.4 grams over 90.0. First calculation, 2.4 over 90. Nice and easy. So 0 0.0267 moles. Right, okay, next that goes into 250 centimeters cubed. Number of moles is C times V over a thousand, but I'm after concentration in this particular case, reorganize it. Number of moles times a thousand over the volume will give me concentration. Moles is 0 0.0267 multiplied by a thousand all over 250, the volume of a volumetric flask multiplied by a thousand. Now I've kept that number on the calculator because it's actually 0 0.02666666666. I've kept it on my calculator times a thousand divided by 250. So I have a concentration, concentration equals 0 0.107 moles per dm cubed. Nice and easy. Moving on. <clears throat> a different standard solution of ethane diuric acid is used to determine the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. A burette is rinsed with deionized water. Bad plan. It's really stupid. The burette is then rinsed with 0 0.09 moles per dm cubed ethane diuric acid and filled with this. Okay, so that fixes it. 
a pipette is then used to transfer 25 centimeter portion of J to the conical flask. The portion was titrated with ethane diuric acid using phenol phthalene. Explain why the burette is rinsed with ethane diuric acid solution in step two. Perfect timing. I got my unseen at Excel exam on Friday. Nice. Uh, Raghab. I don't think I've said that right. Rahab, maybe? Don't know. Uh, it's nice to have you here. Thanks for coming along. So, okay, so why do we need to rinse it? The reason being is if we don't, if we don't, if we don't rinse with ethane diuric acid, ethane diuric acid, the deionized water, deionized water used, used for rinse one, rinse, rinse, rinse one, I'm gonna put one, rinse one would dilute, would dilute <clears throat> the ethane dioic acid in the burette. Dilute the ethane dioic acid added to burette. To burette. It would also, it would also, what that means is it, that's only one mark, so I'm happy with that. If it was three marks, I would then say, therefore, it would give me. So this is the extension on this, the second and third mark, which commonly follow. So tighter would be larger than expected. Tighter would be larger than expected because you're gonna to have to add more of the solution because it's been diluted, it would be larger than expected. And then therefore, expected, therefore, um, the sodium hydroxide, the NaOH would appear, would appear stronger than expected, would appear stronger, higher concentration, would appear higher concentration. So though that's the extension of that question, um, but in this case, it's only one mark, so that's fine. Next, okay, so they're making a parallax error. So number one, you always read a burette from exactly eye level. And the second thing is the meniscus should be on the line. So identify two mistakes. Um, student not reading, not reading, at eye level, eye level will result in parallax error, will result in parallax, I know, sorry, stupid word, error. It'll appear, what would it appear like? Uh, it'll appear more full than it is. That's what it would appear like. Uh, the second thing is meniscus, meniscus should, meniscus should be on pipette line, pipette line. There you go. <clears throat> the student completely emptied the pipette for each transfer. Now that, you actually don't do that. This is actually a really common, um, well, the whole day. Hi, Winkit, good to see you, dude. Thanks for coming along. Winkit's one of my year 13s, uh, one of my best chemists. It's very good. So uh, explain the effect on the titer. Uh, yeah, so just to explain this, the tip of a bu burette, yeah, tip of a burette is designed so that when it drains out, you end up with a tiny amount of solution that fills the tip. Now, you do what's called a touching, which is really silly, it really sounds creepy, doesn't it? You do what's called a touching, which is when you've got the beaker, when you're transferring to the conical flask, when you're transferring to the conical flask, what you do is with the pipette, you, you drain it all in until you get to the very last bit where it sits there, and then you touch the tip of the surface of the pipette to that. Now, you never actually drain all of it. What ends up happening is you have a pipette that has a tiny amount, about this much, kept inside it. Now, what that means is that if you were to drain it entirely, you'd actually have greater than 25 centimeters cubed. So explain this effect on the tighter um, by of completely emptying the pipette rather than leaving a small amount in the tip. So the uh, tighter, tighter will be larger, will be larger. The reason being is you've added more than 25. So you're gonna need more from the burette to neutralize it. Tighter will be larger due 
to more than 25 centimeters cubed being added, being added from pipette. Nice and easy. It's nice and easy so far. Uh, I'm not overly worried by any of these. State the color change. Right, so what was going where? So uh, they put the ethane diuric acid in the burette, so therefore the sodium hydroxide must be in the conical flask, which means we've got phenolphthalein, we've got alkali in the flask before, we then add to it ethane dioic acid. Ah, ethane dioic acid. Yeah, so we're going to start off pink in alkali and end at colorless as the acid takes effect. There we go. Nice, nice and easy. Next, work out your titers. Well, that's 25.05. Next one, 20. Never do any calculations in your head. I don't care what you're doing. Minus 2 gives me 24.60. That's a trap. Your calculator makes that zero vanish like it has on mine. Don't forget it. You'll lose it otherwise. 25.5 uh, minus 1 gives me, and again, same thing, 24.50, don't forget. Used in the tighter, that one and that one, they're in concordance. Complete the table and calculate the mean tighter. So 24.60 plus 24.50, all divided by two, gives me 24.55 centimeters cubed. Move it on. Calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, so, the ethane dioic acid we used was 24.55 centimeters cubed. Its concentration, ich, did it tell us? Oh, my laptop's on a little bit of a, so I'm going to breathe was 0 0.09 moles per dm cubed. 0 0.09 moles per dm cubed. And the volume of the sodium hydroxide, of course, was 25 centimeters cubed, and we don't know its concentration. Let's work out the moles of this guy. Number of moles equals C times V over 1,000. You always write down your equation, never skip it. Number of moles equals concentration 0 0.09 times by the, the average tighter all over 1,000. 0 0.09 multiplied by 20, that 24.55 divided by 1,000 and I get a value of 2.21 times 10 to the minus 3. Keep that number on your calculator. The ratio is a 1 to 2, so double it. Yeah, times it by 2, double it. I've kept that number on my calculator. 4.42 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of sodium hydroxide. That, those moles are in 25 centimeters cubed. So let's reorganize number of moles times 1,000 over the volume of 25 will give me the concentration, times 1,000, kept the number on my calculator, divided by a volume of 25, and I get a concentration of 0 0.177 moles per dm cubed, and I'm done. Moving on. <clears throat> it all seems very reasonable at the minute. I like it. Next. Okay, this question about thermal decomposition of group 2 carbonates. So we're going to heat them up, and they're going to decompose to produce the, ox the metal oxide and carbon dioxide. Give a reason why the delivery tube must be removed from the water bath before removing the test tube from the heat source to prevent suckback. Prevent suckback. Sorry, it's a horrible sentence, horrible thing, isn't it? So what happens is, because the gases in the tube are hot, when you stop heating it, when you take the heat away, yeah, when the heat's removed, it starts to cool down. The gas will contract and it will suck the water back into the test tube and it'll cause it to explode. So prevent suck back is all they're going to be looking for. Next, the results of the experiment are given here. Use the results in the experiment to identify the group 2 metal. Okay, volume of carbon dioxide here, mass of the test tube and carbonate, mass of the test tube, mass of the carbonate. Okay, so number of moles. Uh, oh, hang on a sec. So the only thing we know about we don't know the metal carbonate. This was MCO3. What that means is it's probably going to be a group two carbonate. Uh, sorry, what did I what did I write down? Prevent suckback. Yes, to prevent suckback. What did I write down? To prevent suckback. Yeah, correct. Have you heard of that before, Ahad? 
suck back, as, as I said, when the gas contracts, it draws the water back into the tube and it goes back up the delivery tube and into the hot, or into the hot boiling tube. It can cause it to explode. It's quite dangerous. Yeah. So the only thing we know about, actually, is the volume of carbon dioxide in centimeters cubed. We don't actually, can't work out the moles of the metal carbonate without knowing its relative atomic mass. Uh, yeah, I was answering. Fair enough. Good job. Well done. So number of moles is V over 24,000. Now, they gave me V over 24, but we're not in DM cubed. We're in centimeters cubed. And we collected 95 centimeters cubed of, CA, of carbon dioxide. So over 24,000, 95 divided by 24,000 gives me 3.96 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of carbon dioxide. Seems reasonable so far. Now we can use the equation, which is a one-to-one. One-to-one -one. One -one ratio. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, so the ratio is one-to-one. -one. So if the ratio is one-to-one, -one, then we know that we've got 3.96 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of the metal carbonate, moles of MCO3. Now what we can now do is we also have the grams of the metal carbonate. The grams of the carbonate was 0.33. So number of moles is grams over rams. We can now work out rams. So we've got moles and we've got grams. Reorganize, bring the rams over, bring the moles down. Rams equals grams over moles. The grams was 0 0.33 grams and our, our moles was 3.96 times 10 to the minus three. So was it 0 0.33? Let's just check that. Yeah, it was 0 0.33, 0 0.33 divided by answer gives me a number of 83.4. Okay, now we now that we've got the, that's the RMM, it's actually the RFM because it's ionic. Uh, time, you are amazing. <laughs> oh, thanks very much, Tame. That's very cute of you to say. I appreciate that. I'm doing my best. Uh, so 83.4, uh, are you saying I'm amazing because you know you can see me? Is that what it is? I mean, obviously I look amazing, I do try. Or, or are you saying that my chemistry is amazing? I think that the chemistry is probably more important in this scenario. Uh, so we've got 83.4 for MCO3. That's what that equals. Well, let's get rid of the atoms we do know. Get rid of carbon, get rid of oxygen. 83.4 minus 12.0, and then minus 16.0 times three. So let's run that through. Minus 12 equals minus brackets 16 times three, close brackets. And I get an answer of 23.4. Now, isn't that interesting? So is that magnesium by any chance? Let's have a quick look. 23, oh, isn't that fascinating? 23.4. That puts me closer to sodium than it does. But does it tell it tells me it's a group two metal? Well, that's very strange. That suggests that suggests I've made an error somewhere. Uh, I feel like I'm it, mm, it's magnesium. The answer is magnesium. Uh, M equals Mg. It's really interesting that because I'm quite far off the mark. It should be 24.3. I'm putting one out, but this experiment usually are a bit garbage. Thanks very much, Tame. Uh, uh, Tame, I do appreciate it. So the students suggest that the experiment could be made more accurate by increasing the mass of the carbonate. And I wouldn't actually say that that's particularly true. It'll reduce its his error. That's going to be the first one. No changes to the size of the apparatus were measured and the gas produced being made. Comment on his suggestion. Okay, so the first thing is a larger mass, a larger mass would... It would reduce his error, would reduce his error in mass reading. Yeah, we know that your error, yeah, your percentage error, so just a little bit of taught here, percentage error equals your plus or minus value, value divided by your value taken, value taken times 100. So he took... No, he, the plus or minus value for a set of scales is quite small. It's about plus or minus 0 0.1, depend, 0 .01, depending on the scales you use. If we actually use plus or minus 0 0.1, it's a two decimal place balance. It's very reasonable. Yeah, and he took 0 0.33. We can actually work out his error. 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.33 times 100. So he has a 3% error there. 
he has a 3% error on 0.33. So if he increased his mass, let's say to one gram, like he said, that would be 0.01 divided by one times 100. It now drops it to 1%. So that would actually reduce his error. However, however, <laughs> yeah, that's f oh, okay. So, okay, that's interesting. Now, the volume of the measuring cylinder is 250 centimeters cubed. He has already collected 95 centimeters cubed gas with 0.33 grams. Well, he's about to triple it. He's about to triple his mass. What that means is we're going to triple the volume of gas. 95 times 3, 285. The measuring cylinder can't hold it. Lol. That's a trap. That's hard. Um, volume of measuring cylinder. Of measuring cylinder. Cylinder will, volume of measurement will not manage to collect. Manage to collect all his gas. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can't make adjustments to practicals without adjusting equipment. Foolish. Clever clever question, though. I don't know if I'm going to get the mark on that. I'm tempted to also say third mark. I'm going to add a third one. If you increase the mass of your carbonate, so just to show you what this looks like, you've got a boiling tube, and this is what 0 0.33 grams looks like. Yeah, and when you heat it, you're going to decompose it Wait, I don't quite get it. Do you mind repeating why would the volume triple? Oh, okay. So the reason being, uh, Rahad, is because in his in his practical, we we note that he heated 0.33 grams here, and in that practical, we we are assuming based on our answer of 23.4, he's decomposed this fairly well. He's done a reasonable job of it. He hasn't quite finished because we haven't got the MR we expect for magnesium, but he's done a pretty good job. What that means is that it tells us that 0.33 grams of solid is going to produce 95 centimeters cubed. That's how much it's gonna make. Well, if you triple, if you triple that, you're gonna triple the volume of gas you make. Yeah, it's like, just imagine doing it three times you're gonna create three times the amount of gas. So if you triple the grams, you're gonna triple the gas too. And then his volumetric flask in the diagram is only 250. That's really hard. There, there is a, another one here to mention. I might not get this guys. Can I just point out that is true. That is a true statement so far. However, what's happening is we realize that when he's decomposed this, he's actually done a reasonable job. You know, he's probably decomposed 95% of it. If you have a boiling tube, that's a terrible boiling tube. If you have a boiling tube and you put in three times the mass, if you heat this, you're not going to get it all to decompose. You're going to end up with a core in the middle of this that just won't decompose. You're going to have to heat this little constant mass. Heat, 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 way. Heat, 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 way. Heat, 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 way. You're going to have to keep going until that mass stops changing because that's a lot. A gram is a lot, guys. It really is. So my third one, I would say, is um, the larger mass. I don't know what the answer is going to be here. The larger mass means total decomposition. Decomposition may be difficult to achieve. Difficult to achieve. Um, I, I would say you can do it. You just have to continually heat and reweigh it until the mass stops changing but it, you, you don't want to break it up you know you'd be mixing it it'd be a nightmare practically it'd be much harder okay the entropy change of the thermal decomposition of the carbonate is difficult to measure directly this is correct a very common question nota bene here folks yeah endothermic reactions if you take xco3 and you decompose it to xo and co2 we know that this reaction is Mexobendo, making bonds is exothermic. Breaking bonds is endothermic. We're breaking this into two pieces. This is going to be endothermic. We know this. 
and it is very difficult to you cannot measure these directly cannot eh, cannot measure endothermic you can if it's a different reaction you can't measure endothermic decompositions endothermic decompositions it's actually the decomposition that's more important decomposition yeah it's the decomposition that's more important because if you're heating a solid you're heating it yeah when when you add heat to this this arrow is heat well most of the heat's just going to go around it you're going to lose copious amounts of heat you're not going to know how much has been absorbed yet yeah? cannot measure endothermic decomposition directly cannot measure cannot measure how much cannot measure how much heat energy is absorbed energy is absorbed that's the lightning is absorbed there you go so common question there guys so they've given us a hess cycle nice and easy calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction of cmco and hydrochloric acid oh okay um reaction number one have we just calculated that no has it told us that no lol okay read the question mr duncan read the question the Hess cycle, because we've got two Hess cycles, two things that are missing. In an experiment to determine, it's only two marks. In an experiment to determine H, H1, 0 0.05, by the way, that alarm that you're hearing, we live right next door to a golf course. There's a thunderstorm. This is to get everyone off the golf course, just so you know. I'm not in an air raid. That's not an air raid siren. Okay. So it says 0 0.05 moles of MCO2 was placed in a 100 centimeter cube beaker, 60 centimeter cube to the added, the added, the maximum temperature rise was six degrees Celsius. Count that the enthalpy changed for number. Okay, so it's doing this step by step. Okay, fine. So this is first of all calorimetry, Q equals MC delta T, followed by divide by a thousand, followed by delta H equals Q over N. You should always spit these equations out when you see calorimetry because you're gonna be using them all the time. So the first thing we realize is we've been given the temperature rise. We've been given him, yeah? The, we've got the heat capacity of the water and we've got the volume of the water, which is 60 centimeters cubed. So we've got everything we need to work out Q. Right, so Q equals the mass of the water, which is the mass, the volume of this of the hydrochloric acid, times by the heat capacity of 4.18, times by the temperature rise of six degrees. Don't forget, at the end of this calculation, you must remember to flip the sign because it's exothermic. Just bearing that in mind. Q equals, calculator on, 60 times by 4.18 times by six. So I have 1,504.8 joules of energy. Right, divide it by a thousand straight away, put it into kilojoules. So divide by a thousand, 1.505 kilojoules. Right, we've done that step, we've done this step, we now need to do delta H equals Q over N. So the delta H equals our Q, which we've got 1.505 all over the moles of hydrochloric, oh, 0 0.05, and the acid is in excess. So you can ignore the acid. Yeah, so we're going to be using 0 0.05 moles of that guy. So that answer, which I've kept on my calculator, divided by 0 0.05, and I get an answer of minus, don't forget to flip it, minus 30.1 kilojoules per mole. And I'm done. Let's move on. Using your answer part C, calculate the enthalpy of reaction. Right, so we can now input that data minus 30.1 so now that we've got that this way of the cycle equals this way in the cycle i'm going to do this next to it because it's easier for me to show you what's going on yeah so this reaction here we've got to go in the other direction which is this way now what we realize is this arrow here we need to go this way and it's going with me notice the two arrows are in the same direction so my question mark which is this one equals this direction equals this arrow is with me, so plus, that means with me. Brackets, minus 30.1, close brackets. This arrow here is going against me. So against me, my brackets, minus 150, close brackets. Run it through my calculator. So plus 
brackets, minus 30.1, close brackets, minus brackets, minus 150. And what we're expected to find is an endothermic reaction, which it is. So for one mark, the answer is plus. And you must remember that plus. Your calculator won't show it, but you must add it because that plus simply means endothermic. You cannot, you won't get that mark. Yep, kilojoules per mole. I'm done. Please include a sign. Yeah, warning you. Cool, seems very reasonable. Okay, <clears throat> next one. The haloalkane 2 chloramine 2 chloro 2 methyl propane has been prepared from two. Uh, 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 okay, loads of steps. Suggest two safety precautions other than wearing safety spectacles and a lab coat to minimize the risk when using the reagents. Right, now that's an interesting hazard sign. Let's quickly Google that. Well, I think it simply means hazardous. I think. Exclamation, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, not Mary, uh, it's a hazard symbol. I think it just means hazard. Oh, exclamation mark, an immediate skin, eye, or respiratory contact, irritant, or narcotic. Gas cylinders. So, guys, fume cupboard. Hells yes, Rahad. Hell yes. But it's nice for me to point out that this is um, an this is an irritant or a narcotic. How fascinating! And this is specifically focused at a gas. So, if these questions, I'm just trying to do both sides of the story here. So, this one here is a gaseous, gaseous irritant. How, irrit how, how interesting, how irritating, that didn't work at all, that was a total fail. And this is corrosive, I'm gonna stop now, it was terrible. So the two risks are going to be, well, if they're wearing safety spectacles, number one, wear gloves. It's not complicated, is it? Two marks, wear gloves and use a fume cupboard. Yeah, because if this is an irritant gas, fume cupboard's your way forward. Don't say put a lid on it, It'll explode. Explain why the products in the aqueous layer in step two do not mix with the aqueous, the organic layers does not mix with the aqueous layer. Okay, that's because water, uh, organic, 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 I don't know what organic is, organic liquid has only uh, dipole dipole attractions. Dipole. Dipole, don't know why I capitalized it. Attractions? Was it an alcohol? Two chloride, yeah, okay, it's only dipole, dipole attractions, but aqueous layer, aqueous layer has hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding. Um, hydrogen bonding. So, well, that's kind of it, really. Therefore, they don't mix. Are you tired, sir? Oh, do I look tired, he heard. It's been a long day. Three papers, three AS papers. Man's brutal. The A21s tomorrow might actually kill me. I may die. I may die. Um, hydrogen bonding. So, um, organic liquid, organic liquid cannot, cannot over come overcome h bonding i'd put hydrogen bonding in the exam just so you know do i look tired oh man it's been a long day state why the tap on the separating funnel must be opened in step three wait so let me draw you a separating funnel folks here's what a separating funnel looks like is what a separating funnel looks like. I don't really like the tap going all the way through it, if I'm honest. Yeah, and then it, that's a tap. And then with a cork on it, uh, I'll put like a cork. There we go. That's what a separating funnel looks like. And what happens is you form your two liquid layers 
So if you've got the aqueous layer, which will most likely be on the bottom since it's dense, water is a very dense liquid. It's got a gravity of, it's got a, a density of one gram per dm cubed. Most organics are less than that, so they float. Uh, and this is going to be your organic layer. Now, when you, when you mix these, when you're doing this, you do these like inversions and you mix it, yeah? What often happens is uh, you often, if you've added any kind of carbonate to remove acids, like if this was this organic reaction was using an acid catalyst, we'd have to add a carbonate to neutralize it, which will generate carbon dioxide. Now you have to hold the cap on quite firmly, close the tap. You do this inversions and then you point it. So we, we invert this several times, kind of shake, 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 shake. And then what you do is you then hold it upside down. You then hold it upside down with your hand on the cap very strongly. Yeah. And then what the aqueous layer is now like this, and they're all kind of blurred together because they're shaken. And then you have your little tap set up. And what you do is you open the tap and it goes. And what it does is it's releasing any carbon dioxide or any gas, any pressure that's built up. So the reason why we open the tap is to release any gas that's been produced to release any gas that has been made and prevent and prevent pressure buildup. I don't think you need the pressure buildup bit, but meh. State why anhydrous, uh, that's, a, that's a drying agent, that's a desiccant, um, added as a drying agent, it's not my drying agent of choice. My drying agent of choice is calcium chloride, but eh, anhydrous sodium sulfate. I don't have any of that stuff, I don't think. But anyway, add, added, add, added as a dry, looks like I've just run something, added as a drying agent, added as a drying agent, uh, removes water from oil layer. I'm just gonna put that. Draw the apparatus required to distill the product and collect the distillate between 50 and 52. Okay, so distillation. We've got to collect it as well. Got to collect it. Uh, I'm going to do a collector. There we go. That's a pressure relief, pressure release. Um, tube, and then I'm going to collect it. There we go. And then need to add my pear flask. With the anti-bumping granules. And then I need to do the cork with the thermometer being at that change. And then we're going to have to label it as 51 degrees Celsius. <laughs> There we go. And then this needs to be water in, water, I'll actually add in water as well. Water in, water out, and then heat, and then label the anti-bumping granules. Anti-bumping. And we're done. Cool. Now, just to mention, by the way, um, if they, they commonly ask for this particular setup, an improvement for that particular diagram, well, just to bear in mind, I'm just heating the pear flask directly. You could alternatively do it in a water bath. Yeah, you could do that. It would make it safer, safer especially if we're heating organic liquids. Um, but it's relatively safe. It's sealed in a container. It's, you know, as long as the flame's nowhere near the product over there, we're pretty good. Um, oh, I'm going to label this as the condenser. Condensor. Yeah. Uh, pear, let's do pear flask. Why not? I like it. Next, uh, I'll put uh, pressure release, pressure release tube. There we go, just lets any excess gas escape. Next, the equation for this reaction, the final product, and after distillation weighed 2.62 grams, calc the percentage yield. Ugh, okay. That means I've got to calculate how much he should have made in the first place. 
So how much did he use? He used 35 centimeters concentrate and eight grams uh, of that. Eight grams, 35 centimeters. Eight grams, I'm assuming the acid's gonna be in excess. So this was eight grams of that guy. Oh no, that's propanol. That's, oh yeah, 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 that's okay. And then, what was that? It hasn't given us the density of it. The acid will probably be in excess, I'm assuming. Concentrated hydrochloric acid. Eight grams of the alcohol, yeah, okay. They haven't given us the density of the fluid, so we can't work out the number of moles of that anyway. So eight grams it is. Right, so number of moles is grams over rams. Yeah, so eight grams over, what does propan two, uh, uh, two methyl propan two all weigh? So we've got four carbons, 12 times four, plus, um, Three times three is nine, plus nine, plus 16, plus one. 74, 74.0, how easy is that to get wrong? Guys, do watch out, your calculator will make it disappear, you will lose one mark. I just wanna quickly check that. Propan, two methyl propan, two, well, join that out, four carbons. So for 12 times 4 plus 10 plus 16, 74, yes. Okay, so number of moles is grams. So grams over answer gives me 0 0.108 moles. Okay, so that's moles of that guy. Now what that means is it's a one-to-one. -one. I should make the ratio. Don't forget, you've got to write down these steps. One-to-one. -one. So 0 0.108 moles of the haloalkane that we've just made. We've just switched the alcohol group for the chloro group. Well, how many grams should I have made? Let's work out the MR of that guy. Yeah, so this is 12 times four, 12 times four plus, no longer 10, but nine, plus chlorine, 35.5. That has an MR of 92.5. So multiply that by 92.5, by 0 0.108, and I get an answer. I should have made 9.99 grams. <whistles> That's a poor yield. 92.5, oh, 92.5 times 0 0.108, 9.99 grams. 9.99 grams expected. Wow, this poor yield, this guy's. And he only got 2.6, 2.62 over 9.99 times 100. Wow, 2.62 over answer. Just give me 26%, 26.2%. Wow, it's poor. Interesting. Mm, don't like it. Organics is poor, though. Okay, uh, we're doing really well at the minute, folks. We're actually right at the end of the paper. On the last question already. Wow, flown through this. The chloroalkane produced using the experiment compared the rates of hydrolysis. Okay, 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 he's given us three different types. The student concluded that both the structure of the haloalkane and identity of the halogen affects the rate of reaction. Explain how this result supports his conclusion. Okay, so if we compare, we need to compare these two. Yeah, because one's a primary haloalkane and one's a set. I got 10 grams. Yeah, that's okay. Good. Rahab, that's great to hear. I'm glad that you got 10 grams as well. I got 9.99. So yeah, that's 10 grams. That's the same. That's okay. They won't care. Three sig fig. It'll, it'll work out. Yeah, that's fine. If you're, you're picking up a rounding error. I'm, maybe I did. I might have picked up a rounding error. Uh, longer hydrocarbon fastest. Um, no. The, no, 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 Rahab. Be careful. Don't rush. Don't rush. There's no longer here. They're all methyl propanes. Yeah, you've got to be careful. It's primary, secondary, tertiary. So we've got this guy here. Yeah, so this is 2-chloro, two 2-methyl. Two so we've got this guy, all H's. Yeah, this is the top one. Then we've got this guy, the 1-chloro, 2-methyl. Yeah, that is still there. But this time, the chlorine's on number one. So this is primary versus secondary. Ah, gotta be careful. 
that's a secondary and that's a primary. So we can say that, yes. So, um, oh, explain how the results support this conclusion. That the structure, yeah, and the identity of the halogen. So structure, structure does affect rate, does affect rate since, since primary, primary halo alkanes, the last three marks on the paper, we've done really well. Let's be careful. Structure does affect rate since primary halo alkane um, brackets one chloro. Ah, I'm going to move that down to the lane. Primary halo alkane one chloro two methyl propane propane took uh 320 divided by 5 64 times longer took 64 times took 64 times longer 64 times longer than the secondary secondary 2 chloro 2 methyl 2 chloro 2 methyl propane 64 times longer than to produce to produce the precipitate the PPT full stop so so rate is slower the secondary the secondary right i'm running out of space this is bad so the last one is the halogen does matter as well um halogen halogen also affects rate affects rate we need to see what's happening with the rate so the bromo is slower than the chloro now what i'm doing is i'm comparing these two yeah the bromo and chloro is the only difference and the chloro is way slower than the bromo so halogen also affects rate um bromo alkane bromo alkane reacts reacts at a higher rate rate than chloro alkanes i'll leave it there see how we get on that'll be interesting to mark right end of paper 50 marks right let's let's mark it folks i'm curious i can i just point out uh, i actually thought that was a really nice really nice paper it didn't seem to be too taxing like it uh, it's going to be very interesting for me to see the mark scheme like do we mention bond association good question rahad i don't think you do in this setting they're not asking you to explain it they're asking you to use the results to, to suggest how it proves it it said use the results but it might be rahad i might be wrong let's find out I'm, I'm very curious to see how this pans out now right so i've got both let's try and make this a little bit bigger if i can i've got my two screens split there we go right so let's find the first question right okay i'm checking my chemical test knowledge for the first start so Solution A, nitric acid. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Next, sodium carbonate. Take it. Equation, balanced. I like it with state symbols. Two marks. Very happy about that. Let's move on. Right, this one says identity, uh, except formulae. So KBr aqueous, Br, BaCl2 aqueous silver nitrate aqueous. I'm very happy with those. Right, BA2 plus is apple green. I like it. But a lot of the apples, and so I just have to say green. It says ignore modifiers, pale up. So, okay, they don't really want pale. Oh, yeah. okay. But I'll, fine. I, I actually mentioned apple green. I never tend to write down apple green because there's another one which tends to say olive green. And I'm just like, ugh, just, I don't like those ones, but fine. But green and barium two plus, and then potassium and K plus and lilac. Can I please stress, please don't forget your charges. Most common mistake with this is people just write down the symbols and they'll lose their mark. 
do watch it. Orange slash yellow, allow gold. Huh. Okay, interesting. Orange slash yellow, it's garbage. Uh, ensure all the ethane DOA is transferred to the volume and none less left in the beaker. All acid weighed out should be transferred to flask. Give myself it. Next, concentration. Did I get the right answer? Uh, 0.107. Woo! Yes. So moles of ethane dioic acid, 0.0, uh, it doesn't matter about the significant figures. Yeah, allow moles rounded to three sig figs. Yeah, and 0 .0, uh, 0 0.107. Winner. I'll take it. Two marks. Thank you. Next, if we don't rinse um, to prevent dilution of the acid. Thank you very much. The ionized word dilute the ethane acid that goes into the burette. Next, mistakes. The bottom of the mistress should be on the mark. Mistress should be on the pipette line. Give myself it. But I'm going to put a little note there on the pipette mark. Okay, happy to add that in. Um, the next thing is to reduce the reading should be taken level with the meniscus to reduce parallax errors. Done. Next, the titer will be larger. Will be there will be more sodium hydroxide expected. The value of the titer will increase due to the twenty-five centimeter being uh, since due to more than twenty-five being added from the pipette. Give it pink to colorless. I'll take it. Uh, work out your titers and work out the average. Tick. And tick, I'll take it. Next, give me my concentration. 0 0.177, winner. Moles, ratio, everything, winner. Take it, take it, take it. To prevent suck back. To prevent suck back. Nice. Haven't seen that in a while. Oh, I was umming and ahhing. 83, what? 23.4, yes. 23.4 magnesium. I like it. I like it. I like it. That was tricky, that. They were mean there. We were miles away from magnesium. We were closer to sodium, but then I said a group two. Tricky, that. Didn't like it. Did not like it. No. Uh, comment on, right, larger mass. A larger mass would reduce the percentage uncertainty. A larger mass would reduce his error. Error. There you go the error in his mass reading. The volume of gas given off would be greater and exceed the volume in the measuring cylinder. Right, does it have my next one? Difficult to decompose. Allow gas would escape. Change of rate incomplete. Re ignore references. God, that's me. I still think mine's valid. Mine's better. <clears throat> Ed Excel. Huh. So that's minus 30.1. Winner. Take it. Next one. Delta H minus answer should be plus 120 or 119.9 with a positive volume. Wear gloves. Wear gloves and use a fume cupboard. Next. I don't like this one. Why didn't it dissolve? The products is a halo, is a core rocket, which only has dipole and London forces. Organic liquid only has dipole dipole attractions. The chloroalkane cannot disrupt or overcome the strong hydrogen forces, so the organic cannot overcome H bonding. Perfect. Like it. Next. Uh, pressure gas released. Uh, added as a drying agent. Remove water. As a drying agent. Weird diagram. Round bottom flask and heat, thermometer, bulb, and at the neck, downward sloping condenser with water in and water out correct, collecting vessel and apparatus sealed in the left hand side and open on the right hand side. Huh? Huh? What? What? It's exactly what I drew. Sure, matches theirs. I didn't like this question. 26.2%, thank goodness. 9.99, 10 grams, there we go, yeah. Say allow 9.99, yeah, I'm sure it would. Not gonna lose it for that. Last question was grim, didn't like it. Okay, rate is inversely proportional to time. 
What? How are you meant to know that? Any indication that a shorter time means a faster rate? Uh, duh. Hey, can we have the PDF link? Uh, yes, you can. The PDF link certainly can. I will add it to the chat bookmarks. That's the one. Copy. Um, and then go to my chat. Paste. Go. There we go. Hello, sir. I just wanted to say that I love your videos. They're so helpful and literally the reason why I started getting eights and nines. Oh, oh yeah. That's so nice of you. Thank you. That's like the sweetest thing. Oh, high five. Virtual high five. Boom. Good job with your eights and nines, by the way. Very proud. Looking forward to seeing you attend lots more of my A-level ones next year. Keep it up. Proud of you. And, and now at this point, I'm going to definitely get this question wrong, aren't I? <laughs> so I didn't mention that the time um, alkanes react at a higher rate. I didn't actually mention time. So that's something for me to point out here. So I definitely needed to say that a longer time, longer time means faster, higher rate higher rate. I've implied it, but I wouldn't give it to myself. The ultimate amazing. Hello. It's nice to see you here. Okay. So what are the other two? So tertiary and tertiary is faster. Oh shoot. It's tertiary. Oh no. I said it was secondary. Oh man. You guys have just turned up and the only question I got wrong on this paper and it was this one. It's not a, ter it's not a secondary. It's a tertiary. I'm an idiot. I even drew a tertiary. Oh, Mr. Duncan, take your time. Easy mistakes, man. Yeah, faster than the primary. The Bromo and Broman bond. One chloro has carbon bromo. Uh, bromine compound is faster. That's all you needed to say. Yeah, the bromine compound is faster. So I get one mark out of those three. Oh, dear. What a mess. Uh, no, thanks, sir. Thank oh, no, sir, thank you. Oh, biggest high five. Fab. Oh, big hug. <laughs> guys, that actually brings me to the end of the webinar. Oh, I'm so gutted. I just had you guys turn up right at the end and I ruined it on the last question. Ah, oh, come on. I was so close. I nearly got full marks. So close. So close. Anyway, stop sharing screen. Let's bring us back. Let's switch my camera back to my other one. Front. Oh, guys, one hour, one minute. That was not bad for marking as well. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming along. You guys are fabulous. It's so nice to have you here. Can I also do a big shout out to Rahad? Thank you, Rahad. It's been great having you here. You've been doing, you've been great giving me a little bit of feedback, a couple of questions. Really great. You're more than welcome, Rahad. I'll see you everybody soon. See you later, guys. Bye.